what is hashtag trans needs and what problem is it trying to solve? Uh, so I alluded to this. This is a project we did um, as part of the White House LGBTQ Tech Summit. Um, it stemmed from a conversation that I had with the chief data scientist of the US, uh, DJ Patil, who works for Megan Smith. Um, you know, and he said, uh, he, we were talking, uh, had the, was lucky enough to be in his office in June and we were talking and, you know, he was wondering how, you know, his work in precision medicine might involve trans people. And what really became apparent was there just was no data on trans people. We were invisible from the data sets he was looking because they had a male and female box and that's it. And as we talked, most federal forms are that way. So transgender people literally can't be recognized in the data. And so in a three month project, we knew we weren't gonna solve that. We weren't going to be able to change the fact that there's no statistically significant data. Um, but what we thought we could do is hear what the impact of that was and some of the areas where that was falling short. So that's basically what we did. We did a hashtag campaign. Um, we worked with a number of nonprofits uh, that were already doing great work out there to have them help. We got some celebrities, uh, Janet Mox, Scott Turner Schofield, Laverne Cox, um, to help us get the word out that we were doing this, uh, some great media help. The advocate and BuzzFeed wrote about us, uh, Bay Area Reporter, and tried to let people know, hey, what are some of your needs that aren't getting met? Um, and then we reported back uh, in an interim sort of uh, group teleconference uh, earlier this month, uh, and then we're going to produce a final report with both kind of what we heard in the listening campaign, but also, um, you know, some directions for further study, what, what needs to happen next. And just to have um, a White House that is listening, um, that not only uses the word transgender in speeches, which I think was a first, um, but actually cares about uh, making the world safer and better uh, for trans people is, is unique and, and to be part of that has been interesting. Um, and it's, you know, it's still kind of going on. So, um, you know, I encourage people to still use the hashtag trans needs. Um, at the same time, we've kind of finished the formal uh, gathering of data and we're in the process of writing that report um, back to the White House, um, which I hope, I, I hope, you know, and, and we'll certainly share with uh, the trans hack community to try and get the word out about it. Um, because we really want to make sure that, um, you know, we, we get as much of an audience for what, for what these needs are. Um, and it's, it's really broad. I mean, there's no, you know, the set of needs for the transgender community uh, is, you know, super wide and broad. I think, you know, it, it certainly starts, uh, you can't, you can't start that discussion without talking about um, the trans women of color that are being killed, um, the incredibly high unemployment, poverty, violence, um, rates uh, within the community, but it's a really broad thing. It's, you know, we heard a lot from people who uh, have problems flying with the TSA and especially with the body scanners and, and the process they use. Um, but, you know, it really, you know, what struck me was how much it was basic needs um, from healthcare, uh, which is both affordability and accessibility, but also competent healthcare, sensitive healthcare. Um, so those are some of the things that we heard about.